Hi, I'm Infernum, and this is my recap for the anime. Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. If you like my recaps, please subscribe. This story is about a girl transferred to Japan who speaks Russian, and about our Kudze, who sits next to her in class. He understands Russian but doesn't let anyone know, and every time Alia teases him in Russian, Alia walks towards the school, and everyone around is amazed by her beauty. Suddenly, the most popular boy in school appears in front of her and asks her out, but Alia immediately refuses, saying she's not interested in him. She also points out that chains are not allowed in school and continues walking. Alia enters the classroom and sits next to Kudze, but Kudze is asleep. Alia greets him, but he ignores her. Alia greets him again, but he doesn't wake up, so she kicks his desk. Kudze wakes up and greets Alia. Alia asks if he watched anime all night again, to which Kudze replies, yes, he watched anime all night and then discussed it with a friend over the phone. Alia says that Kudze has gone crazy. Kudze starts yawning, and Alia sees this and says in Russian that he is cute, but Kudze doesn't understand and asks what she said. Alia replies that she said Kudze is pathetic. Kudze looks in his backpack and realizes he left his book at home, so he asks Alia to share her book. She agrees. In the middle of the lesson, Kudze starts falling asleep, and the teacher suddenly asks what comes after iron in chemistry. Alia nudges him in the side, and he accidentally raises his hand. The teacher thinks Kudze wants to answer, and calls on him. Kudze didn't pay attention to the teacher's question and apologized to Alia. However, Alia pointed to copper and the teacher said it was incorrect and asked Alia to answer the question. Alia stood up and said it was nickel and the teacher confirmed that the answer was correct. Kudze started asking Alia why she had given him the wrong hint and Alia said she accidentally pointed to the wrong element. Then Alia said he was cute again in Russian and Kudze once more asked what she meant. Alia replied that she called him stupid, but it's not that simple as Kudze understands everything and knows the word cute. Kudze blushed after Alia's words, reminding her that they are in the same class. Kudze explained that he knows Russian because he picked up some words from a girl he used to play with in his childhood. However, Kudze doesn't understand why Alia flirts with him. If he admits he knows Russian, Alia would be mortified, so Kudze decided not to tell her. Kudze started using his phone, and Alia, being a member of the student council, reminded him that phones could only be used in an emergency. Kudzi began talking about a game and mentioned that he got Tsukuyomi. Alia took the phone and saw Tsukuyomi. Kudzi said she looked beautiful with gray hair. Alia gave him back the phone and said in Russian, aren't my hair silver? Kudzi blushed again and asked what she said. Alia replied that she called him a nerd. Kudzi and his friends went to the cafeteria and started discussing what they got to eat. Suddenly, the student council appeared and one of Kudze's friends said he wanted to meet Maria, who is Alia's sister, but she might have a boyfriend and rejects all the boys. Kudze said that whether it was true or not, Takeshi had no chance. Takeshi admitted that he talks to Alia, but said he had no right to make such statements. Takeshi began discussing Suo, saying that she was approachable, but out of his league. The girls from the student council didn't know where to sit and saw that the seat next to Kudze was free, so they decided to sit there. Suo noticed that she and Kudze had chosen the same lunch. Alia noticed that Suo and Kudze were talking so easily and asked if they knew each other. Suo replied that they had known each other since childhood. Suo said she really wanted to be friends with Alia and asked if she would mind. Alia responded that she didn't mind becoming friends. Kudze's friends decided to leave and let them be, so Suo moved closer to Kudze and asked him again if he had considered joining the student council since he had experience as a vice president. Alia was shocked and couldn't believe it, but Kudze explained that he had to become one because every president needed a vice president. Suo added that Kudze would see things through to the end if he took on a task. Alia said in Russian that she knew about this. Alia, Kudze, and Suo left the cafeteria together, and Suo went her own way. Alia then asked Kudze how Suo could put up with someone like him, to which Kudze replied that he still had another friend, Alia, and that they were friends. However, Alia didn't consider them friends, and upon hearing this from Kudze, she felt embarrassed and left to attend to her tasks. We are shown Kudze's past, where as a child, he runs towards a playground, where he meets a girl and plays together with her. She helps him learn Russian, and by evening, he wakes up. The next morning, he arrived at class earlier than everyone else and decided to tidy up before the others arrived. Suddenly, Alia appeared and was surprised to see that Kudze had already finished everything. Alia went to her desk and Kudze noticed that her socks were dirty. Alia explained that she had walked too close to the road and a truck had splashed her. Alia began asking about Kudze and why he didn't want to join the student council. 
She began removing her socks in front of him. Kudzi noticed this and became very embarrassed. Alia noticed his embarrassment and decided to tease him, asking him to fetch her spare socks from her closet since she couldn't go herself. Kudzi agreed and went to get the socks. He brought them to her, and Alia asked him to help her put them on. However, Kudzi became embarrassed, and Alia said it was a fun challenge for a boy. She teased him, implying he couldn't handle it, but Kudzi insisted he wasn't afraid and proceeded to help Alia with her socks. Alia reacted unexpectedly, but Kudzi accidentally touched her, which upset Alia, and she ran off. Kudzi remained on the floor. Kudzi corresponded with his sister, mentioning he might have a liking for something unconventional and was struggling with how to handle the situation, as Alia refused to speak with him. Kudzi tried to catch up with her and explain, but Alia retorted in Russian that he had a strange preference. Kudzi asked for forgiveness, but Alia asked if he was okay, knowing she had accidentally kicked him hard. Kudzi assured her he was fine and thanked her for the opportunity to glimpse into such a secret place. Alia didn't immediately understand what he meant, but later realized Kudzi had seen her underwear. She struck him and started to run away, calling him a fool in Russian. Kudzi began chasing after her, but Alia was too fast, urging him to stop pursuing her. Kudzi couldn't catch up with Alia as she ran so quickly. Ten minutes later, Kudzi caught up with her and asked for her forgiveness. Alia acknowledged hearing him and admitted her own fault. Kudzi knelt before her and said, Princess, please accept this. Alia asked what he meant, and Kudzi said he knew she liked this drink. Alia accepted the drink and asked him in Russian if he wanted one too. Kudze immediately became embarrassed, realizing it might lead to his first indirect kiss, and asked her to repeat what she said. Alia replied that she said it was the best drink after a run. Kudze was taken aback, and Alia teased him in Russian that he didn't understand anything. Kudze understood perfectly, but couldn't do anything about it. Kudze came to the storage room at the request of Suoyuki. Knocking on the door, he found Yuki inside, who greeted him skeptically. Kudze asked her why she had called him. Yuki decided to tease Kudze and said, Where are your manners? You should have asked first. Sorry, did you wait long for me? To this, Kudze decided to play along and replied, Sorry, did you wait long for me? Yuki responded in kind, saying, Yes, I waited quite a while. Suddenly, Alia appeared and commented that they seemed to be having fun, apologizing for interrupting. Kudzi laughed, but inwardly was displeased with Yuki's actions, realizing she had done it intentionally. Yuki asked Kudzi to get some board games from the top shelf. Kudzi retrieved them and asked why she needed them. Yuki explained that they often play during the school fair and at parties to celebrate the election of a new council member. It turned out that Yuki had won and become the new council member. Alia, who was sitting nearby, complained that she always had to do everything alone. Kudze and Yuki apologized to her for getting distracted. Yuki stepped away, and suddenly Alia started speaking in Russian, saying, Well, pay attention to me too. Kudze felt a shiver run down his spine. After Alia's persistent hints that Kudze should pay attention to her, he thought to himself that Alia had no shame. Alia looked at Kudze and said that he didn't even realize she liked him. They finished and returned to the student council meeting where Yuki and Alia thanked Kudze for his help. And suddenly, Ken Siaki, the head of the student council, appeared, surprised that they had finished so quickly. Alia and Yuki explained that it was all because Kudze had helped them. Ken Siaki, looking at Kudze, immediately said that he had heard a lot about Kudze and that he was known as a reliable guy. Kudze decided to leave, saying it was time for him to go, but Ken Siaki stopped him and expressed his gratitude for his help. Kudze initially refused, but Yuki intervened, saying he shouldn't refuse since there was no food at home. Ken Siaki looked at Yuki and asked how she knew there was no food at his home. Yuki replied that it was because they were childhood friends. They went to a modest cafe where they discussed Kudze joining the student council. Ken Siaki tried to persuade Kudze to join, but he declined. Yuki also began persuading him, wanting to work together with Kudze like in old times. However, Kudze insisted that she could manage without his help. Ken Siaki urged him not to rush his decision, mentioning that this year there was another candidate for the head of the student council, Alia. Kudze looked at Alia, who said that next year they would be competitors with Yuki. Refreshments arrived, and they ate together. After dinner, Kenziaki and Yuki went one way, while Kudze decided to walk Alia home. As they walked together, Kudze asked Alia if she was sure she wanted to participate in the student council elections. Alia answered affirmatively and said she would continue alone from there. Kudze returned home and found shoes in front of him and Yuki lying on the couch. Kudze was surprised why Yuki was at his home today, but Yuki said, she was staying over at Kudze's place tonight. Reading a romantic manga where a handsome stranger accompanies the heroine, Yuki decided he must be her brother for sure. 
Kudze laughed at her, since she pretends to be his childhood friend at school, when in fact, she's his real sister. Yuki began to insist that she's not only his childhood friend, but also a childhood friend and real sister all in one for Kudze. Kudze called it nonsense, but Yuki finished reading the manga and saw that he was actually her older brother, yet he kissed her, leaving Yuki shocked. Kudze suggested maybe they're step-siblings, but Yuki grabbed Kudze by the collar and said that's the joke, they're blood siblings. The next morning, Yuki jumped on Kudze to wake him up, but Kudze got scared and said it's not a good morning after that. Yuki insisted it's every guy's dream, asking if he got excited, to which Kudze told her to get up quickly. Today, Yuki and Kudze decided to take a walk on the weekend, and after the movie, Kudze said they needed to buy clothes because Yuki wanted to see another movie. And suddenly, Yuki chose a dress for 15000 which surprised Kudze with such prices. But then, Kudze mentioned to Yuki that he feels like they're being watched by a silvery miracle that watches over them. But Yuki said she noticed it long ago and mentioned she has a special perception of other people's views as her superpower. Kudze asked her if she wasn't ashamed to say that, and Yuki admitted she was embarrassed, of course. Kudze wondered what to do, but Yuki decided to turn around and call Alia, who had been watching them the whole time. Alia was stunned that they noticed her. Yuki asked Alia if she had lunch yet, and Alia said she hadn't eaten yet. Yuki suggested going to the place where they were planning to go with Kudzi. Kudzi immediately started persuading them to go somewhere else because Alia would be with them. Yuki asked Alia if she liked spicy food. Alia said she had tried it and it was okay, although she hadn't even tried spicy food. Kudzi began to worry about Alia, as he understood how spicy it was there, since he and Yuki are fans of spicy ramen together. Alia began to assume that Kudzi didn't want Alia to go with them, but Kudzi just wanted to save Alia and they all agreed and went to the cafe together. The cafe is called Hell's Cauldron, and they cook ramen there. Alia asked why it was called Hell's, to which Yuki replied that it's just a thematic name for the dishes. Alia didn't believe Yuki, and they went inside. Alia saw only three dishes on the menu and didn't know what to choose. Kudza decided to help Alia and said he would choose Hell's Lake, as he was here for the first time and didn't know how spicy it was. Alia decided to choose the same as Kudzi. Yuki saw this and also ordered Hell's Lake. While they waited for their food, Alia commented that she had never seen Yuki dressed like this before. Yuki noticed how Alia was eyeing Kudze and decided to tease her, saying they started the morning in the same bed. Then Yuki mentioned she wanted to try a new look, and Kudze gave her his shirt. Alia looked at Kudze and asked how to interpret this. Kudzi said she came into his room herself, climbed onto him, and took the clothes herself. Alia was shocked because she didn't yet know that Yuki and Kudze are siblings. Their orders were ready, and Alia saw her ramen and was intimidated. Summoning her strength, she decided to try the ramen and was overwhelmed by how spicy it was. Alia started complaining in Russian that she couldn't handle it anymore, and it was too spicy. Kudze understood and told her to stop. Yuki asked Alia how the ramen was, and Alia said it was delicious. Yuki offered her chili sauce to make the ramen a bit spicier. Alia couldn't resist, and Kudze noticed Yuki's glance and realized she was doing it on purpose. After Alia tried the ramen with chili sauce again, she was completely overwhelmed by the spiciness. Alia and Kudze sat in the park where Alia tried to recover from the spiciness. Kudze noticed ice cream and decided to buy it for Alia. Alia was so happy to have ice cream after such spicy ramen. Kudze then asked why she wanted to become the head of the student council. Alia answered seriously that she just wants to, because if there's a summit to strive for, why not aim for it? Kudzi remembered his past when he helped his sister Yuki become the head, but those who lost to Yuki were very upset, and Kudzi took all the blame on himself, because if it weren't for him, the losers wouldn't have cried. Alia finished her ice cream and decided to go buy clothes. Kudz didn't immediately agree, because they weren't that close, but then he thought that Alia didn't have any friends to go shopping with and agreed. Alia entered the fitting room and wondered if he could hear her changing. She decided to tell him to stay away, then began to change and put on a dress. She was about to go out and show it to Kudze, but then she hesitated, wondering how Kudze would react. She decided that if he didn't react, she would slap him. Alia walked out to Kudze and asked, what do you think? Kudze looked at her and said the dress accentuated Alia's figure, making her look even more beautiful than usual. Alia blushed, and they closed the curtains. She knelt down and was embarrassed, as was Kudze, because he had intentionally said that, but felt very awkward. Alia showed Kudze many outfits she wanted to wear, and he evaluated each one she showed. Suddenly, Alia decided to show him a provocative outfit, 
She opened the curtain and stood in front of Kudze, asking, How about this? Suddenly, Yuki was standing in front of her, saw this, and said, That's bold, Alia. Alia quickly closed the curtains and said in Russian that she wanted to sink through the floor. Yuki asked what Alia said, and Kudze said she wanted to sink through the floor. Alia, Yuki, and Kudze rode the same subway home. Alia still hadn't recovered from that moment. Suddenly, Kudze's stop came, and Yuki got up. They said goodbye to Alia. Alia came to herself and said goodbye to them. Kudze and Yuki got off, and Alia went on. A couple of seconds later, she didn't understand why Kudze and Yuki got off at the same stop and went together. Late in the evening, Alia returned home, and Masha greeted her with a hug and a kiss. Masha told her that in Japan, it was already late at this time, and she should come back earlier. They went into the room, and Masha asked what had happened to Alia, as she looked upset. Alia said nothing was wrong, but Masha insisted that her eyes did not deceive her. Alia turned around and said that she had been out for a walk and had run into Kudze and his childhood friend. Masha began teasing Alia, saying that whenever Kudze was mentioned, Alia seemed out of sorts and that Kudze must have warmed the heart of such a cold girl. Masha then asked if Alia liked Kudze. Alia said she did not know where Masha got that information and that she and Kudze were just friends. Six years ago, in Vladivostok, Alia was sitting in class when the teacher announced that they would be going shopping and the best group would receive a reward. They divided into groups, and everyone told Alia where to go. Alia went to the stores and approached an employee, explaining that she was conducting research, visiting various shops, and recording information. When Alia returned, she asked her group if they had completed their assignment, to which a boy responded that he had not done anything yet and would do it tomorrow. Alia was upset because she noticed that they were not taking the assignment seriously and ended up arguing with the boy, telling him he was not being serious. The next day, the teacher announced that Group B had won, and Alia was very disappointed. On the way home, she was upset, thinking that if her group had tried as hard as she did, they could have won. She blamed herself for relying on them and promised herself that she would only depend on herself. A few years later, she passed the test and entered a Japanese school. She was surrounded by everyone who was amazed that Alia had passed such a difficult test. Suddenly, the bell rang, and everyone dispersed. Alia noticed that lazy Kudzi was lying nearby. She called him and woke him up. Kudzi recognized Alia and said she was the transfer student. Alia confirmed this, and Kudzi started talking to his friends. Alia decided to keep an eye on Kudze and noticed throughout the day at school that he was a huge slacker. She commented that even in such a prestigious academy, there were slackers. Alia was working late on her outfit, and unexpectedly, some girls approached her and asked if she was planning to leave. Alia said she would stay, and she heard the girls gossiping about her, saying she was trying too hard. Alia responded that she was just doing what she always did. Suddenly, Alia accidentally pricked her finger with a needle and felt pain. At that moment, Kudzi appeared and said he knew Alia was there. He approached her, and Alia said she would keep trying, but Kudzi showed her a document and said he had arranged with the craft club and also got permission to stay overnight at school so everyone could gather and finish the task. Alia was surprised by Kudzi's efforts. Kudze told her that they needed to wrap things up and that there was no point in dragging the whole class down alone. Alia was frustrated by this and stood up, saying she wanted to give her best effort because it was more important to her than to others. Kudzi said that she was directing her efforts in the wrong direction. Kudzi said she should focus on motivating the entire class instead of trying to do everything on her own. He realized that he had upset her, even so, and apologized, thanking her for her dedication. Alia agreed with his words and left, still puzzled by Kudzi's behavior. At the night meeting, the boys decided to discuss how to set up the festival. One of them suggested a haunted room, and everyone worked hard to excel in everything. The Autumn Festival began, and their class won an award for the best event. By evening, everyone went out to dance at the school. Alia noticed Kudze sitting alone. Kudze started saying who would even organize folk dances after the festival. Alia said she would sit with him, and Kudze asked why she didn't want to dance, suggesting maybe she didn't know how. Alia replied that she had turned down everyone, but she did know how to dance. Kudzi commented that she was called the Snow Queen because she always refused. Alia was annoyed by this nickname, as she did not see herself as a queen and was irritated when all her efforts were attributed to her appearance. Kudzi promised to try not to call her that anymore. Alia thanked Kudze and admitted that she had been doing things wrong all along and couldn't have enjoyed the festival as much without his help. Kudzi told her not to worry about it. Alia decided to apologize and wanted to repay Kudze for his help. She asked him not to refuse, and Kudzi agreed, saying he would call her Alia. Alia didn't understand what Kudzi's benefit 
benefit was, and Kudze said that she was the idol of the whole class and that Kudze would call her Alia here. Suddenly, some boys started asking Alia to dance. Alia began to refuse, saying that she didn't know how to dance, but the boys were persistent. Kudze decided to help her. She took Alia by the hand and led her away from the other boys, saying, Sorry, she's already occupied. Alia ran and felt her icy heart melting. Kudze told her to show what she was capable of, and Alia told him that Kudze would lead. The next day, Alia and Kudze were in the same class, and Alia realized that Kudze had become lazy again. Kudze asked her why she was looking at him like that, to which Alia replied that she saw him as worthless, speaking in Russian, and that he had been so charming yesterday. Masha heard the whole story and understood that Alia had fallen for him after that, which Alia began to deny. But Masha said it was a typical love story, as it was with her and Saya. Alia said that now Masha should understand everything, and that Alia trusted him now. Masha recounted how her boyfriend saved her from dogs, and that such boys always have charm. The next day, Kudze came to the student council, and he was greeted by the principal and Masha. Masha stood up and greeted Kudze. Kudze said they needed someone to go shopping. Masha took his hand, and Kudze said his name was Kudze Masachika. Suddenly, Masha froze, recalling the name Masachika. The club president noticed this and asked if Kudze had a ghost behind him, to which Masha let go of Kudze's hand. Masha said that she was always happy to meet Alia's friend and walked past Kudze, asking in Russian, So, shall we go? Kudze replied that he didn't understand what she said, so Masha turned around and asked again, So, shall we go? And they went. Masha and Kudze were selecting items for the student council. Masha and suddenly saw some stuffed animals. She remarked that one of the cats looked very much like her. Masha suggested buying a toy for each member, to which Kudze asked if they were running a zoo. Suddenly, Masha pulled out a toy and said it looked a lot like the president. Masha agreed and said she would definitely take this little cat, and she took home a fluffy white kitten. They arrived at another place, and Kudze offered to hold her things. Masha handed over the kitten and asked him to take care of Alia's kitten. While Kudze was adjusting the kitten, Masha decided to take a photo of him. Masha tried some tea and asked Kudze for help, to which Kudze said he wasn't very knowledgeable about it, recalling his past when his father told him that he and his mother had decided to live separately, and remembering how his younger sister fell ill and chose to stay with his father, Masha suddenly approached Kudze and asked if he was all right, as he had even turned pale. She hugged him and started stroking his head. Kudze felt embarrassed, but was pleased by this gesture. However, he suddenly felt hot as Masha, holding her tea, accidentally spilled it on him. Masha and Kudzi returned from the stores and went back to the student council room. Kenzaki greeted them and then noticed Masha with a plush toy, asking what it was. Masha said the toy was very cute and that she would leave it there. Afterward, Kudzi showed everything they had bought. Kenzaki appreciated Kudzi's help, saying that without Kudzi, who knows what Masha would have bought. Kenzaki asked again if Kudzi wanted to join the student council, but Kudzi said no and that he would help from time to time. Masha suggested that Kudzi could just be a member on paper. Kudzi replied that he didn't understand why Kenzaki was so keen on recruiting him to the student council. He understood his sister's intentions, but not Kenzaki's. Kenzaki responded that he didn't understand why Kudzi was so stubborn about refusing. Kudzi said he thought he wasn't suitable for the role. Kenzaki then shared that he became the student council president to win a girl's heart and showed Kudze a photo on his phone. Kudze thought it was Kenzaki's younger brother, but Kenzaki said that was him in the lower grades. Kudze was surprised and commented on the impressive transformation. Kenzaki explained that two years ago, he was like that, with poor grades and not good at sports. One day, he fell in love with the most beautiful girl in their class, and now he has achieved his goal and become the student council president. Kenzaki said that one doesn't need a special reason to join the student council, mentioning that Masha joined just like that. Masha added that it doesn't matter why you join, what matters is what you achieve there. Kudze heard Masha and realized that she truly thought this way. Kenzaki told Kudze that there was nothing to worry about or be embarrassed by, recalling how he joined the student council for his sister's sake. Kenzaki said he was ready to accept Kudze at any time and he could take as long as he needed to think about it. Kudze began to consider it, thinking he could make someone else the president. Then he remembered Alia and asked where she was. Kenzaki explained that she had gone to resolve a conflict between the football and baseball teams as they were trying to decide who would get to practice first since they only had one field. So Kenzaki sent Alia to mediate. Kudzi decided to go check if they were fighting. Alia was standing between the football and baseball players who were still arguing about who would get to use the field first. Alia suggested they use the field by the river, 
but everyone looked at her with aggression as that area was overgrown. Everyone was arguing and no one could decide what to do. Alia tried to intervene, but realized no one was listening to her. She didn't know how to influence people, recalling how she was let down by her classmates in childhood. Alia understood that she was now paying the price for always distancing herself from people. She began to cry, feeling alone, and knew it was her own fault, but she wanted help. Suddenly, Kudzi appeared and said that Kinzaki had sent him. A little earlier, Kudza had overheard everything and realized that Alia wasn't handling the situation well. He understood that both sides had already dispersed, but when he heard Alia asking for help in Russian, he decided to help her. Kudzi said that this was why Alia was alone, because she always spoke in a language no one understood. Everyone recognized Kudze, and he proposed that the basketball club train by the river since they had fewer members, and the football club helped them carry their equipment. However, everyone started arguing again. The girl managers from the clubs were happy for the help and agreed with the proposal. Kudze said that representatives from both teams should visit the student council tomorrow, and they all dispersed. Alia and Kudze returned together, and Kudzi apologized to Alia for intervening like that. Alia said it was okay and asked why Kudzi suggested what he did. Kudzi explained that the basketball manager and the baseball captain were dating, so he proposed that arrangement. The captain wanted to help his girlfriend, so he stayed silent, and the manager tried to keep quiet because the baseball captain was her boyfriend. They were waiting for someone like Kudzi to make such a suggestion so they could step in without offending anyone. Alia smiled, realizing how clever Kudzi was. Kenzaki met them and asked how they managed. Alia said that Kudzi did everything himself. Kenzaki praised him, and Kudzi said that the president had set it all up and already knew everything. Kudzi then said he agreed to join the student council. As Alia and Kudzi walked home from school, Alia wanted to know if Kudzi really decided to join the student council. Kudzi confirmed, and Alia asked if it meant he wanted to help his sister become the president. Kudzi replied, what if that's the case? Alia responded that she wouldn't give up and would fight against them, but Kudze anticipated Alia's response and said that he would help her become president and not leave her alone, promising to assist her in any way he could. He extended his hand to her, and Alia smiled, took his hand, and said in Russian that she loved him. Kudze remembered a time when a girl had confessed her love to him in the same way. He thought that he could still feel those emotions when suddenly Alia squeezed his hand tightly and asked if he was thinking about another girl. Kudza was startled and realized this was just like a scene from a romantic comedy manga, one that should be avoided. Alia asked Kudze again if he said he would stay by her side. Kudze confirmed, but Alia pointed out that not even a second had passed and he was already thinking about Yuki. Kudze denied it, but Alia said that if he wanted her forgiveness, he had to accept her slap. She slapped him and then called him a fool before offering her hand again and they walked home together. As Kudzi and Alia talked on their way home, Kudzi mentioned that he used to be a prodigy. Alia commented that a prodigy and Kudzi were two different things. Kudzi walked Alia home and then asked if his cheek still hurt. Kudzi replied that he was fine and Alia kissed him on the cheek. Kudze froze in shock, not understanding what was happening. Alia said it was just a kiss on the cheek and then walked away, leaving Kudze confused about her feelings for him. He asked her to say it in a language he understood because he didn't comprehend what she meant. Meanwhile, Alia returned to her room, blushing as she recalled telling Kudze that she loved him. She began to justify herself, insisting that she could never truly love Kudze, claiming she had just been swept up in the moment. However, she decided to accept her feelings but reminded herself that she had more important matters to attend to. Alia tried to forget about it when she heard Masha come home. Noticing that Masha seemed down, Alia asked what was wrong. Masha decided to show her a cat named Alia, which had flown out. Masha remarked that Kudza was a good guy and said she understood why Alia had fallen for him. Masha told Alia she was very cute when she hid her feelings and advised her to confess quickly, as someone might steal him away. Alia was taken aback by Masha's sudden boldness and watched as Masha went to her room. 